now like to introduce Arash Taibbi, the CEO of Cara Technologies. Uh, back in 2018, Arash received his PhD in electrical engineering from the University of Auckland. Having lost his hearing in one ear in 2017, he became interested in issues affecting the deaf community. And it was this, along with Arash's passion for finding scalable solutions for the challenges of the modern world, that was the impetus behind forming Cara Technologies, a startup that's focused on translating content into New Zealand sign language using a digital avatar. Uh, in 2019, Arash received the University of Auckland Blue Award for innovation, and he was also recognized as one of the university's 40 under 40 alumni in the disruptors and innovators category. Added to that, Arash is also a fellow of the Edmund Hillary Fellowship. So welcome, Arash. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Uh, we're thrilled. Sorry, Arash, good to see you. Uh, we're thrilled you could join us, excited to hear everything. So I was just going to say to everyone at the bottom of your screen, uh, you'll see a Q&A button. So don't forget, if you've got any questions as Arash is speaking, uh, put it in the Q&A box and we'll have that 10 minute Q&A session at the end. Sorry about that, so Arash, over to you. Awesome, awesome. So just go ahead and share the screen. Hope everybody could see me with my um, slide. So just begin. Kia ora, I am Arash. I am the CEO of Cora Technologies, the company that we like to provide accessibility into sign language. And um, I just joined a little bit early and I listened to um, David, a uh, fantastic presentation. And I just want to um, emphasize that I just learned so much. And um, today I'm here to talk about the story of Cora and how we reached that and have what I did learn uh, to become a bit better learn um, better leader. So um, this is um, so. As you guys know, I came to New Zealand. Um, and I did my master in Melbourne University. I came to New Zealand in 2013 to do my PhD in Auckland University. And um, as like when I arrived, I really really fall in love with the country. And uh, and and uh, I like the university. The facility was fantastic. Everything was awesome. The year after I started my first startup, I was working on BI software solution. Uh, technically, it was uh, making the big Excel file look very nice for the CEO so they can go to the board and show off uh, the achievement of the company. And everything was good. So I was legitly the happiest guy in New Zealand. So all of a sudden, I got um, a disease called Meniere. It's an inner ear problem. And technically, what you get is um, the worst, um, the worst vertigo that you can imagine, and you get it every day. So it's really, really affected my life. So I'm seeking for some solution. So I end up um, talking to a couple of doctors. We try to suppress it using drugs, and uh, we use like 33 tablets a day from the same pill. Try to suppress it. Didn't work very well. So I end up with injecting a toxic into my left ear to kill the uh, balancing nerve. At the same time, I lost hearing in one ear. So um, I was become happy again because the vertigo has been stopped. However, I figured out because I get the disease when I'm, when I'm fairly young, there's a chance of getting other ear affected as well. So I could go completely deaf. So that was a little bit shocking, but it was more shocking for me when I figured out there is no deaf students in our department. Like why New Zealand number one engineering school doesn't have any deaf staff and deaf students. So if I become deaf, I shouldn't be part of this. And it was, it was, it was really hitting me hard and I was very nervous, angry, upset. So I went to the Deaf Education Center in, in Kelston in Auckland and I asked the same question. Like, why we don't have any deaf students in our school? And um, the answer that was get was quite shocking and figured out the number of dropped out from the high school and intermediate school for deaf kids are very higher than normal kids. I was asking, why is that? The, 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 the answer was super simple. We don't have enough teacher who knows sign language. And um, as an engineer, uh, I have this not a great gift of, I call it problem solving in anxiety mode. When, when I'm getting stressed, when, I, when I'm in a bad mood, um, I like to provide a solution ASAP. That's making me feel comfortable. So I was like, yeah, I have to throw a solution for that. Why the number of dropout is a lot. 
why is that? So, so, um, so I come across with the idea that, and uh, some sort of an online education platform for a, for a deaf kid. And I said, guys, if we don't have enough teachers in New Zealand who know sign language, they might be teacher in the US. Um, imagine somebody in US teaching mathematics in sign language, so we can use it here. It's online education. You don't, you don't need to have enough teachers. We bring the teacher to you. And um, they, 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 they say to me, it's not a very smart idea. And the reason is because each country has own sign languages. The sign language used in US, in Australia, and New Zealand are different sign languages. I was like, oh, it doesn't work very well. So I come with another brilliant idea. It's okay, if we don't have enough teacher who know sign language, how we can use online education of hearing people. And there's a technology I could develop called closed capture technology. I provide subtitle automatically for everything. Wow, I'm, I'm genius. <laughs> so I, I threw that idea to them and I figured it's not working well, it's not the smartest because First of all, deaf kids cannot read. The second thing is, um, even though they could read um, English for a deaf community is their second language. Even though they might be born in New Zealand, they will learn the English when they grow up. Because as a, because we as a human learning when I language when I be kid by listening to it. So um, in fact, a, a, a 20 years old deaf person in New Zealand has a literacy age of eight and a half. So reading a closed capture doesn't work very well. It has to be in sign language. And I, it resonates with me a lot because I am from Iran and English for me is my second language too. So for me, reading subtitle doesn't work very well. And then I was learned my first uh, leadership lesson. And the first lesson was shut up and listen, right? You don't need to be the smartest guy in the room listen, 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 and, and shut up. Don't try to throw the idea. So, and I, and I did that. So, okay, cool. How can I help? And they said, okay, uh, if you could somehow provide a teacher who's available 24 seven in sign language, this is what we need. So I, I was very excited and I have this idea, okay, so how can I make everything accessible in sign language? And, and, and I will listen to what I've been told, always available, no sign language. And I said, okay, we, uh, we are in a blooming area of avatars and digital humans and they are available. So if you have an iPad, you can, you can bring up a digital human and communicate that with him. How, how about, we make digital humans, the avatars, to do the signing. It, it's great. So I have this idea. I go back to the community again and said, hey, guys, this is a brilliant idea I got for you. And I didn't receive a very positive feedback. And I was like, wow, why? And I figured out the avatars are not very welcome in the deaf community back then. This is 2017, 2018. And I was really upset, but I tried to dig down and ask more questions. I figured out these are the current solution available for avatars in 2018 who can sign. And for me, as a hearing person, they look okay because in the book, it says it should be a lean approach. If it doesn't look nice now, it's fine. We move, do more iteration, should be fine. But when I asked deaf community and I figured out all of these avatars missing something they call facial expression. And facial expression is very, very important in sign language because it has its own grammar. So there I was learned my second leadership lesson. And it was do not, do not develop something for someone, develop with someone. And this is, is very, very important. It's, it's so obvious, but sometimes we really, really miss it. And this is a very, very important concept. So all of these um, stuff that you see are like hearing people try to solve the deaf people, and this is not working. You need to work with the deaf community, and deaf people need to take the leadership on your solution. This does not work. So I was like, okay, now I understand. I learned my lesson. So we need a digital human who can who has very good facial expression and very, very natural to the human. 
right? So we should scan the eyes. The eyes should be perfect. Skin should be the best. Even the hair. If you could see all of these avatars, they have one junk hair. We tried to put implement each individual hair and it was like, yeah, I finally solved the problem. Then we built this. If you look at Rui, is, is, is the ugliest avatar in the world, number one. But in each individual are perfect. The eyes are perfect eyes that have been scanned from a body. The skin is perfect. But if you put them together, it doesn't work very well. And there I was learned my, how many lesson are we? <laughs> my third lesson was you are not the smartest guy in the room. You have to understand if you have a bold vision, you need to have a smart team. You need to bring the people who are smarter than you in doing something. And, and, the, and you have to be resilient and not give up and trust your team. I did so. So our team grow, I trust them. I bring the people who are smarter than me. So we develop that. So now all of a sudden, Nikki become the world first hyper-realistic signing avatar. And dev community saw that the, the mindset has been changed. They loved it so much. Minister of Education loved it. Minister of Social Development loved it. Deaf Education loved it. We start doing pilot and it's become real. And it was fascinating and see how that happened. I really encourage everybody to go to our website, Cara, it's cara.tech. And you can see Nikki in action, which is really, really cool. So, um, the, the idea was that this is the, the core um, co-founder team. So um, all of a sudden, our team just exploded from three people up to many people. <laughs> so um, it was really, really fantastic to see our team is growing. It was cool. It was awesome. But I got a new challenge. So how to lead a team? Like this is something that I didn't been taught from the... Um, from the university, and it was it was a it was a new thing. So, in a startup, when you're working, everything for you is new. So you have to learn on the fly. And the the lesson that I learned was, okay, as a leader, my job is to bring the smart people and make sure these smart people working together. And that's. That's the most important value of a leader can add to the team. Because if you look at um, my, my experience is mainly on the startups. I never work in any corporate. Um, so in the startups, teams are very important. Actually, the third reason that um, you have many reasons that startups are failing is because the teams are not working together very well. It's not because they're not smart. It's not because they're not doing its job right is because they cannot work together very well. And as a leader, it's very, very important um, to make sure everybody can work together very well. So um, these are stuff that I learned. Um, so again, as a fresh guy who who's, who's, has a very bold vision to provide fantastic solution to the very old problem was, um, so I'm going to read books, et cetera, et cetera, how to lead the team. But I tried to read many books, but I figured out the, less, the, the thing that was the lesson was like, I should not copy. Um, every team is different. I shouldn't not like just go to my friend's startup and say, what are they doing? They exactly copy. It's, it doesn't work. So because you as a, as a, as a leader are, have a different character and also your team is very different. And the thing is for our team, we have um, software development guys who don't like to talk. Uh, we have um, deaf people and who focus in on the language aspect and the cultural aspect, and they really, really like to talk and have a long meetings. We have um, um, ML engineers and uh, machine learning team who are who have a very different concept and they want to be developing fast, fast, fast. Um, we have artists which they have no clue about the technology and culture and sign language, and they'll care about the artistic part and, and how we can uh, make sure the Nikki's look good in an artistic way. And we have business people who cares about money and how we can grow and the money is important. So how can you bring these five people who are super diverse and super different focus in a one umbrella? 
So it's, it's very tough. At the lesson one, one I, should, I should not copy. I should bring the core people and design a recipe together. And um, in a startup, it's very different. So the people that you hire at the beginning are, have a high chance to stay with you for five or 10 years, and they are shaping the culture of the company too. So I gather the team and we try to develop our own style of communication, working together, how to set up the meeting and try to use the recipe to, 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 move, to move forward as fast as possible. And we are not fanatic about our recipe. We really do it every month, every two months. We sit down and say what we done wrong and we how we can do it better. Um, which comes to another thing, as a leader, one of the other chance is because in the startups, we have this open space that you can see everybody's reaction. I call it checking in and looking for yellow flags um, is just like, try to have a sense of smell and you can sense that this thing is not going very well and make sure everybody is working together is like a well-oiled machine and try to always have your ear sharp, see what, what are you missing? What is tiny things that missing? And, 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 and it is very, very important. But to me, for example, what they've mentioned about the fountain doesn't work. It's not going to like impact directly, but that's a yellow flag that you should fix things. And this could set the culture very well. And the other things um, I figured out is in, in, in my teams, because of people are super diverse, like it's ridiculously diverse. <laughs> Um, people are having a different background. So we had a person in our team who was, the previous job was super tough. They didn't allow him or her to not express um, her, herself or himself. And that was a challenge. So it was a challenge for me to bring out the information from that there. So what is going on and how you can help us. And, and I fear that as a leader, I have to make sure I put the environment is safe enough to people to come and talk. And, 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 and it, is, it is very, very, very important. It's, it's ridiculously important how make sure that people are feeling safe to come and talk and raise their hands up and say, hey, I think these things that we do it, it is not correct. It's, it should be this way. And the things, um, the people using this example a lot is, for example, in Pixar movie that I really, really love is when they want to get the movie out, they bring everybody like from, I don't know, from the unrelevant department to come and watch it and criticize it and, and make sure they are happy about it. So if the internal team is not happy, how you can get the product out is impossible. Um, so in order to make that happen, it should be, um, like some sort of safe environment. And this is a culture that really, really, like I personally work a lot because in some, because I'm coming from the background of Iran and if come some, if, if somebody come and tell me, hey, this part that you've done is not correct. I take it very personal. So I have to make sure that um, no person get attacked. So again, having a safe environment for people to talk is very, very important to, to be more agile. And the third thing, the, the fourth thing I would like to mention is sense of ownership. Um, what do I mean is, um, as a young leader, I was, at, and I categorized myself as a problem solver. In the meeting, every problem coming, I try to throw up a solution, which I think it's smart and it's worked very well. But sometimes I think as a leader, I have to step back. I know that if you know the answer, let the other people to throw the answer. So let the other people to take the ownership. And they, again, this isn't the startup. The people who are working with you, they will be here, majority of them till exit because these are the core team. So the sense of ownership is very, very important. Um, it's, I'm not talking about giving them the equity. I'm talking about give them sense of, hey, that was my idea. I'm going to work on it hard and I'm going to be proud of myself. And I'm going to say, hey, that idea that Kara developed, I suggested like as a person. So that make things magic. That's make the employer, like the friendship, we become a warrior and fighters and fight for that problem. Like last night, one of our staffs was working till 4 a.m. I was asking, hey, God, you need to go home. And he was like, no, 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 I need to finish that. And the sense of ownership allow that person to do that. And this is really, really, really important. Um, and again, um, I don't have a long like um, history of, of, of uh, of some sort. Oh, sorry, my Siri just popped in. <laughs> um, but 
I'd like to show you an example of how, how actually um, a magic can happen if you trust your team, if you give the sense of the ownership and how you can go forward. Um, I need to share, stop sharing a screen and play a video because with these things, you cannot do that. So just bear me, bear with me for a second. All right, so hope everybody could see cute bears here. So we had a big meeting and discussed about what is the accessibility truly means, right? We think that having a sign language as a hearing person that I suggested was having a signer at their corner is always the solution. But this is came out the whole team sitting together fight, get angry, get cried, throw the ideas and this is what we end up with. So this is a part of a cartoon for kids. And um, the first section is about like the original video and then just, just four seconds. Then another four seconds is our solution. Just want to show you. I'm Pirate Captain Boomer. This isn't a dinosaur, it's a pirate ship. And this is what we can do with the technology. We can get the character out and make the same character to sign inside the movie. Imagine a new Disney movie and, 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 and Mickey Mouse can sign in the movie for deaf kids. Imagine, and we can, we can extend that to the, uh, to the movies and make the character in the movie like Al Pacino signing, that, that, that's so cool. And this has came out because of a great team that we have. And, 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 and yeah. I think that is all from me. If you guys have any question, I'm more than happy. I hope you found it like informative. Thank you, Arash. That's amazing. I, I look, I can't imagine what we're going to be seeing in the movie soon. That's incredible. Uh, we do have a few questions, so I'll jump right in. Um, what advice would you give to leaders on how to stay motivated and keep fighting when they're hitting constant brick walls? Is one question here, like you did when you you were trying to solve a real world problem. Yeah. Um, the, the the thing is, um, from my, I'm again I'm, I'm going to back my background, which is coming from Iran, and as a male person, I always have to be strong. When you're solving a big problem, always you hit the wall. And this is where the team can help you. So you have to raise your hand as a person, say, hey, guys, we hit the wall. And sometimes the team is helping you. So it's very important to rely on team. And the second thing is, uh, when I start Cara, I get a piece of paper and write my vision. And this is my vision. And what are the requirements? Teams, fundings, infrastructure. And I got everything incorrect. And the other requirement was the resilience. When I'm hitting the wall, I go back to good days that I had this piece of paper and I read it again. That's motivating me to go forward. And, and the other thing is, um, sadly, when, when we read books or watch the movies, they're always talking about success. And we think if you have a company, every day is fantastic. People come to work and work till hard. No, it's, it has in down's time. And taking good care of yourself mentally would help a lot. And don't be shy, say, I'm burning out, guys, help me, seek for advice. It's totally fine. It's totally, totally fine. Absolutely. Um, another question here about green flags. What are some of the green flags or good behaviors uh, that you've come across when managing such a diverse team? And next part of it is, how did you encourage the behavior to continue? Well, that's a very good question, actually. I just give you just a green flag that I just received this morning. <laughs> um, so one of our, our, our deaf staff came in and um, because he recently joined into our company and, um, and, and she said, oh, um, I, I get the news out to my friends and said, hey, I start working in Cara. And the other friends become so jealous and ask me to, to let you know if you need any more staff, please let us know. And that's uh, that the things that make me go forward as as like wow we have a company that people like to work with. This is a, this is a this is something that you should be proud of. Um, usually, as as a CEOs, we have to be proud of oh our sales increased triple times. Oh we raise on our Series A or B. But this is something that you should be proud of. So this something is okay. Well, 
We manage our diverse team very well. So that's a green flag. Next step is how we can make it more greener, how we can repeat our success and how we should not drink our cool aid. Like we shouldn't be proud of our green flags. We have to repeat our success. And uh, again, having a safe environment for people to talk, which allows you to sense that green flags. Absolutely. People, your people within your business are your key sales tool too, aren't they? And how they feel about the business. Yeah. Um, yeah. So another question here, uh, what was your, what were your three biggest challenges with a startup? Okay. Uh, challenge number one is how to lead a team. Uh, technically, how to lead a team who people are like, I have not many years of experience, right? I was fresh from a boat of University of Auckland, came in and said, hey, I want to solve this problem. And the people working sometimes like, like they're 30 years older than you and, and, or, or have 20 years more experience in the industry and how you can make sure you get better out of them. And that's something that I just keep improving, right? If you ask me to have the same speech next year, I might list 10 other things that I learned and constantly learning. The second thing was, um, at the beginning, I taught to bring in my team, I tried to bring smart people and, and, and also the, the people who are, sounds more friendly to me. This is a very, very wrong assumption because people asking how we can have a diverse team is, as a human, we are more filled to work with the people who are similar to us, who are, we found it more friendly. This is wrong. If you wanna sell something, you, you don't need to like that guy, you're, you're, your, your cell team is the team that can really go and do something. So this is something that like, when you have a company is not the place that you bring your friends in, it's, it's the people, is the place that you bring the smart people in. And you might not like that guy at the beginning, but you have to work together and make sure the team is working very well. Then you become friends later on. So, um, and the third thing is always will be how to run, how to not run out of cash. So uh, having a good team and you always want to make sure there's a fuel on the tank for the team to go forward, make sure you manage with the money very well, like really, really well, really, really well. So yeah, <laughs> that's my three problem that I'm solving at the moment. No, very good. <laughs> uh, a question a little bit different here about some advice you might have for organizations who are looking to be more inclusive to those who are hearing impaired. Okay, um, awareness. Awareness is king. Well, I'll just give you an example. I was working with one of the companies overseas. They have a Netflix for kids. So it's some sort of Netflix for kids. It shows cartoons, the video of demand. And I said, okay, guys, uh, can you guys make this accessible for sign language? And they were like, no, our platform is accessible. We have closed caption, we have subtitle. I was like, a four years old kids can now read. Mm. And the CEO went like, ah. Oh, I didn't know that. It's not because that person wasn't smart. The awareness is very important. Like uh, put yourself in other people's shoes is very important. So as an organization, this is a job of like, like I think I blame myself and the people advocate for accessibility of bringing this awareness in. And I really encourage everybody who are working on an organization to talk to the like management team or talk to people like from the other department, how we can make our solution more accessible and bring this awareness, uh, which, which which is very, very important. Very, very important. Absolutely. Right, I think we've got time for one more question. So I'll, uh, I'll have a look here. Um, let me see. Uh, I love your comment that was something like having a safe place to talk is an important part of becoming more agile. Um, this is Sarah asking this because it seems when we get busy and the business needs us to be more agile, people stop talking. So yeah, do you have anything more to sort of let us know about that? Yeah, so what we developed, we, we figured out that problem. So um, last year when the COVID hit, we tried to come across with a solution for a deaf community because like, if you have a COVID, you have to call a center. And how would you call a center if you're there? So it's, oh, this is a problem. We have to solve it ASAP. So it becomes super busy. And it was a very good cause that we tried to solve, but we become super busy that we didn't get the chance to check in and everybody, how, how's everybody doing? So we developed something we call it, in car we call it huddle. So if you have any problem, you say, hey guys, I need a huddle right now. And there's no blame or shame or, 
hey, is this not important? So the people can come and talk. So if somebody say huddle, within the two hours, everybody should show up. And, and we try to talk to each other and some sort of forcing each other to make that happen. And as a leader, sometimes you have to ask for a huddle. Hey guys, we need to sit down together and talk and this safe things. Yeah, of course, when you're busy, every minute counts, but sometimes you have to learn to walk before you learn to run. And this is very important. And this checking in and being a safe environment, that's, that's, that's absolute necessity. Absolutely, taking that time. Look, um, that, thanks so much, Arash. We really appreciate your time today, but I'm afraid, yeah, we're probably going to have to end it there. Um, sure. That's all the time we've got questions for. Uh, but if you are able to be around for a little bit more, uh, people can connect with you in the virtual environment by clicking on the Now Attending button and searching up your name. But thank you so much, Arash, for joining us. I'll let you go. It was it great was talking to you. Yeah, cheers. Bye. Pleasure. Thank you. Bye.